Purposely. Your life, God's purpose. Listen at Purposely.com. We began this week with some really powerful words from a meme that stopped me in my tracks. Do you remember these? Jesus treated Judas so well that none of his disciples were able to detect that it was Judas who would betray him. Now, that's what I call loving your enemies. Welcome into the Bible for Busy People. I'm Erica, your host, and I am cheering you on. If you're still here, this is a tough series, but I'm wondering, and I'm asking myself as I'm asking you, do those words fall on your ears, fall on your heart differently than they did at the beginning of this week? They do for me, and I'll tell you why. It's not that I've put into practice everything you and I have learned yet, obviously. We might have to do this study again in six months, right? But I feel like what's coming to my mind is that Jesus is our example. And if he can do it, he's going to help you and me to do it, to love our enemies. It makes me think of skydiving, something I will never do. But let's just say I worked up the courage to do it. You know, I might want to see a tandem dive from the plane before I jump out of the plane, right? We have watched Jesus do the hardest thing in history, love his enemies. Can you imagine loving the people and forgiving the people around you who had hammered nails into your hands and into your feet? It's an unbelievable love story. So that's what I'm encouraged by right now. I'm also encouraged by Psalm 23, verse 5. Come on, let's do this because you know it's Friday. That means it's time for joy bombs in the Psalms. Listen to this. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. I want you to know today, I take heart when I read King David's words. Psalm 23, some of the most treasured, precious words in the Bible, right? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. God understands that people are difficult. (laughs) He also understands that you and I are difficult when we want to be, right? He is not like saying that the hurt doesn't matter. He's not trying to tell you to hide your hurt, sweep it under the rug, forget it happened. It's hard to do that. He is asking you and me to forgive the people who hurt us and step on our hearts and trample them because he knows it's the remedy for our own hearts and spirits to feel better. What is the point in carrying around the poison, right? When we forgive, we are rejecting the poison. We're choosing the remedy and God will help us to do it. So I want to encourage you with that. King David, you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. That one verse in the Psalms brings me so much joy because it tells me God sees. He sees the predicament I'm in. He has pity on me, but he doesn't want me to have a pity party. That's what I interpret. He's telling me, I'm going to take care of you. And he's saying that to you as well. I believe it with all my heart. Without further ado, I just want to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. It has been a deep week. And again, good for you for sticking through it. You are so not a sissy. So I want to invite you now to join me in Psalm 104. We're going to begin in verse one, but I want to picture yourself in a hammock and the sun is shining and there's a nice cool breeze. Let these words just wash over you and fill your spirit. Let's dive in. Let all that I am praise the Lord. Oh Lord, my God, how great you are. You are robed with honor and majesty. You are dressed in a robe of light. You stretch out the starry curtain of the heavens. You lay out the rafters of your home in the rain clouds. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride upon the wings of the wind. The winds are your messengers. Flames of fire are your servants. You placed the world on its foundation so it would never be moved. You clothed the earth with floods of water, water that covered even the mountains. At your command, the water fled. At the sound of your thunder, it hurried away. Mountains rose and valleys sank to the levels you decreed. 
Then you set a firm boundary for the seas so they would never again cover the earth. You make springs pour water into the ravines so streams gush down from the mountains. They provide water for all the animals and the wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds nest beside the streams and sing among the branches of the trees. You send rain on the mountains from your heavenly home and you fill the earth with the fruit of your labor. You cause grass to grow for the livestock and plants for people to use. You allow them to produce food from the earth, wine to make them glad, olive oil to soothe their skin and bread to give them strength. Thank you, Lord, for carbs. The trees of the Lord are well cared for. The cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There, the birds make their nests and the storks make their homes in the cypresses. High in the mountains live the wild goats and the rocks form a refuge for the hyraxes. I had to look this up. A hyrax is kind of like a rabbit with rounded ears and it doesn't have a tail. Or some also say it's like an oversized guinea pig. So now you know what a hyrax is. Verse 19, you made the moon to mark the seasons and the sun knows when to set. You send the darkness and it becomes night when all the forest animals prowl about. Then the young lions roar for their prey, stalking the food provided by God. At dawn, they slink back into their dens to rest. Then people go off to their work where they labor until evening. Oh Lord, what a variety of things you have made. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Here is the ocean vast and wide, teeming with life of every kind, both large and small. Skipping down to verse 31 now, may the glory of the Lord continue forever. The Lord takes pleasure in all he has made. The earth trembles at his glance. The mountains smoke at his touch. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God to my last breath. May all my thoughts be pleasing to him for I rejoice in the Lord. I mean, I couldn't think of a better verse to wrap up our week together. Yes, Lord Jesus, may our thoughts please you. We will rejoice in you. Wow, amen. It has been a tough week. Congrats for sticking through it. You're amazing and you are loved. Thank you for making time for the Bible for Busy People today. If being part of this community is a blessing to you, it's super easy to share this podcast with someone you love. We're all about spreading the hope of Jesus like butter. So if you've got a moment to write a review, boy, we'd really appreciate that. Maybe you need a little prayer today or you're ready to take that next step with God. I invite you to check out our show notes. You're going to find lots of encouragement there. This podcast is one branch on a tree called Purposely, a podcast network designed with practical podcasts to help you find and thrive in God's purpose for your life. If you've got a pulse, you've got a purpose.